Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of properties of equality, specifically how we could use them to solve for certain variables, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So, there are four properties of equality that I want to talk about in this video, and we've been using them intuitively for years, but let's just call them out real quick. So the addition property of equality states that if A equals B, so if we could assume that A equals B, then we know that we can add the same quantity on both sides. So we can say A plus D equals B plus D. So given that we've got a, an equation to begin with A equals B, you can add the same amount on both sides. We'll do that commonly to try to find a variable or to isolate a variable. And so the subtraction property of equality says the same thing. If A equals B, now you can subtract D from both sides. Right? As long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, you're good. So that's the subtraction property of equality. So you probably know where this multiplication property of equality is going. So AD equals BD. So you can multiply. And then the same thing with this division. So if A equals B, then A over D equals B over D. So these are the four properties of equality we've been using for several years now. Let's say we wanted to isolate X. Right? I wanted to solve for x. Well, how in the world are we going to do that? It's, it's pretty entangled in all of this. Well, we need to use our order of operations. And we need to go kind of in reverse order. Okay, So parentheses, exponent. Now we need to remember that multiply and divide are inverse operations. So they can be done in either order. Same with add or subtract. And when we're trying to untangle something like x, right, you go from the bottom up because those are the weakest, uh, the, the weakest operations. So if I'm wanting to get that x all by itself on the left side, okay, I'm looking for any way I can add or subtract. And I see this plus 8. So I'm going to use the subtraction, right, and I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Okay, so the subtraction property of quality says I can subtract 8 from both sides. So that's going to get rid of that because plus 8 minus 8, right? So that's going to leave me with this 3x minus z over y equals okay, c minus 8. Now, I don't know what c is. I don't know what z is. I don't know what y is or x. We're not actually going to find it. We just want to isolate x. So now we're at this multiplication and division. Because even though there is a subtraction up here, this whole term is being divided by y. So if I want to isolate that x, I need to get that y out of there. So the only way to do that is to multiply this whole side by y. Because what I would get then is I would get this y over this y, right? y over y, and that would cancel itself out. But if I'm going to multiply the left side by y, the multiplication property of equality says I need to multiply this side by y. So it stays balanced, OK? So that's going to leave me with 3x minus z equals, and I'm just going to leave it like this, y c minus 8. I could distribute it out if I want to, but it kind of serves the same purpose. It's not like I know what c or y actually is. So now I have a multiplication and I have a subtraction. We go back to what's the simplest form. It's that subtraction. So if I had a minus z, I'm going to add z to both sides. But I'm going to do it outside of the parentheses, right? It's not being multiplied by that y. So it's going to be 3x equals y and then c minus 8, and then I'm just going to add a plus z. It just kind of dangles off to the end. Now I can finally use my division property of equality. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Right, So that's going to cancel itself out. Well, 3 over 3 just makes 1. So I finally isolated x, and it turns into this ginormous uh, problem that I can't solve unless I know values for y, c, or z, but that's how we use the properties of equality.